Hello, Internet. It is I, Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today, we're going to be talking about Chaos Walking, and boy, I am excited to talk about this. <laughs> so, as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons, so let's get to it. Pros. Yes, there are pros to this movie. I want to be fair, okay? I could just trash it immediately, but I will be fair, and I will go over the pros first. All right? Good. So, pros. As I've said in Boogie, in that video, New York City theaters are reopening, which means there's more potential money to be made. Because NYC is one of the biggest movie markets in America. It's them and LA, and I've I've heard rumblings of LA potentially reopening within like a month or so. That's what they're saying. So we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, the fact that you have one of the biggest markets in America open only means positive things for the box office. So that's definitely a pro. Uh, another pro are two actors here, are two main actors, Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley. Tom Holland, you all know him. He's Spider-Man. Well, the MCU Spider-Man. He's been, you know, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, and soon Spider-Man No Way Home. Nowhere Home. No Way Home? Is that? Yeah, that's the title. No Way Home. You know, the new Spider-Man movies have made quite a bit of money. Hell, uh, Far From Home was the first Spider-Man movie to make a billion dollars. And Tom Holland, he's incredibly recognizable. <laughs> Thanks to those movies. So if people are going to watch this movie for any reason, it's going to be him. But also because of Daisy Ridley, you may know who she is. She was the main protagonist in the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Now say what you want about the sequel trilogy. Trust me, many people have, including me. <laughs> I think the sequel trilogy, in hindsight, is complete trash. But you can't deny that those movies made a lot of money. Like, Force Awakens, $2 billion. Last Jedi, $1.3 billion. Rise of Skywalker, despite being a god-awful movie, still made a billion dollars. So people know who Daisy Ridley is. They recognize her. So, yeah, these two actors obviously extremely recognizable. Not to mention that this movie stars uh, my man, uh, Mads Mikkelsen. <laughs> Uh, an actor who many people love and is also recognizable, mostly from the series uh, Hannibal, and also for the fact that he's replacing Johnny Depp in uh, Fantastic Beasts 3, if you forgot about that. There's David Oyelowo, he's recognizable. Nick Jonas, you all probably know who he is. So yeah, this cast is not too bad, considering the movie, <laughs> what movie this is, and all the problems it went through through like the cast is not a major major issue i mean sure some would say tom holland is a bit overexposed right now and i will get to that when we get to the cons but he's still recognizable so yeah i'd consider those pros uh that's it <laughs> all right cons 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 this movie has been through absolute hell production hell that is i want to just uh, explain to you how bad it really is so this movie finished filming in 2017 i did not stutter i said 2017 not 2019 not 2020 2017 this movie stopped filming in 2017 four years ago so you're probably wondering, what the heck happened that cost it to be released four years later? Well, a lot. Apparently in 2019, the movie was, well, it was delayed several times. One of the reasons it got delayed so much was because um, this movie had test screenings and they went horribly, horribly wrong. They were extremely negative. So to salvage the movie, they had to go through everyone's favorite word, reshoots when you hear the word reshoots when it comes to a movie's production 
That's not a good sign. Actually, reshoots are kind of common for pretty much any movie. No, it's extensive reshoots. Those two words only mean bad things. Okay? That's come from what I've seen in the past. Movies like Fan 4 Stick. And, um, you know, Fan 4 Stick got extensive reshoots. Suicide Squad got extensive reshoots. Justice League. Uh, yeah, extensive reshoot is a automatic red flag for any movie. So, yeah. Then it was delayed several more times because of COVID. And now it's coming out now. Mainly because I think Lionsgate have completely given up on it. They're just like, screw it. We don't care anymore. Just throw it out there. So, yeah. Automatic con. <laughs> this whole movie's production history is an automatic con. Uh, what else is a con? Well, the reviews, as you probably guessed, are terrible. <laughs> and the fact that the movie we're getting now is the fixed version, I could only imagine what the original cut <laughs> would have been. It would have been a train wreck the train wreck of all train wrecks probably would have been more entertaining because of that. But no, that version will never see the light of day. But still, the movie I've heard is very, very bad. It's just poorly put together. Things aren't explained. It's, it's bad. It's very bad. So that's definitely an automatic con. Uh... I guess another con is that, you know, Tom Holland, yeah, he is kind of overexposed to a point. I mean, literally like a week or so ago, he had Cherry, which was on Apple TV Plus, uh, Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus. I don't remember, but that came out literally a week ago and now you have this. So I feel like that's, it's a bit too much. <laughs> you need to space these movies out a bit. Because people might be... Because, you know, overexposure is a thing. If you are in too many movies and they all come out around the same time, people are going to get tired of seeing your face. Surprisingly, Kevin Hart has avoided this. I don't know how, but he has. He's one of the only actors who have avoided this. I mean, Tiffany Haddish, she... was. She started out well with um, Girls Trip. And then she did one too many movies where it was all, all the same genre. And then people just got tired of her and they didn't want to watch her anymore. You know, that's, this will happen to any actor. If you are in too many movies at once, people won't want to watch you. They just don't want to watch your face. And not to mention that Tom Holland being an MCU actor... You know, it's common knowledge at this point that just because you're in the MCU does not mean you're going to be successful in every movie you make. I mean, look what happened to Robert Downey Jr. last year with Doolittle, which had Tom Holland in it. Okay, so that's a fun fact. Yeah, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, uh, Scarlett Johansson with Ghost in the Shell. Like, it is not a guarantee. Like... Sure, you can make a lot of money in the MCU, but outside the MCU, nothing. <laughs> Same goes for Daisy Ridley. Just because you're in Star Wars doesn't mean you're going to be successful in everything that's not Star Wars. <laughs> All right? I mean, look at Harrison Ford. He's had he's Han Solo. He's had plenty of failures throughout his career that don't even revolve around Solo or even Indiana Jones. All right? Look at Call of the Wild. Last year. Sure that movie was affected because of COVID. But that movie was going to be doomed no matter what. So yeah. So that's obviously a humongous con. Because just because these actors are indeed recognizable. Does not mean they're going to be automatic draws. Outside of their respective franchises. So yeah. Uh, What else can I say? Cons, cons, cons. Well, I could say COVID, pandemic, lack of theaters, blah, 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 blah. All that's still there. Uh, and it probably won't change until like at least a few more months where things will probably start to loosen up a bit. You know, more theaters can open up. But yeah, right now things are still bad. So, con. 
Uh, I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. Yeah. Yeah. Opening weekend. Well, I'm going to say 2 million opening weekend. I think that's reasonable. Uh, 2 million opening weekend, 5 million overall, 5 to 6 million, and then it will die, and then that will be it. I mean, sure, it'll be in a lot of people's uh, worst worst of the year list for 2021. That's for damn sure. But, yeah, it's just, ugh. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, so uh, that's that. Uh, and so now we have one more movie to talk about this weekend. Raya and the Last Dragon. The big one. The one people actually care about. And then after that, oh, nothing for solid... Uh, two weeks of nothing, and then I come back on the 26th with nobody, and then the 31st with Godzilla vs. Kong. I will fill in this two-week gap with... Oh, I forgot to mention Tenet's going to be in New York City now. After months and months of waiting, it's now going to play in New York. I doubt it might do well. I, I heard the movie's kind of ick. Really ick. So, who knows. But Yeah, that's a thing that's happening. Uh, great. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, these two weekends are going to be filled with early summer 2021 box office predictions. As long as the movies stay on the calendar. I'll probably have to delete some of those videos <laughs> if they get, these movies get delayed again. But yeah, look forward to those videos. And yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn on notifications, share the whole drill. You want to check out more videos like this? I got a playlist on the homepage with all the movies you know I've covered so far in 2021. Not to mention you know all the movies I made videos on 20, 2019, 2020. You want to wa want to watch any of those? Go right ahead. Got the canceled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. Uh, you want to, I just made two episodes like back to back on the same night. So if you want to check out those episodes and not to mention all the previous canceled episodes, go right ahead. I also got box office recaps, go over the box office results for any particular weekend, not weekend, month. What am I saying? A uh, month. Recently, I've been doing double recaps. I will do my February and March recap in April. As for my April recap, I'll probably group it in with May. And then after that, I might go back to doing single recap months with June. Because June has enough in it to justify uh, a recap video by itself. Well, technically May does too, but I don't, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'll just group... February, March, April together, just to be fair. I might, I might do that. That's actually not a bad idea. I'll think about it. So, uh, yeah, look forward to that. And also, uh, check out all my previous recap videos. You can look at that on my playlist on the homepage. And yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.